Welcome to On Software. Conversations with thought leaders in software development. Hey, Bob, question for you. Site rev up? Hmm. End of day. Bob, did you get my SOS on the POS data? Bobby, looking a little stressed, brother. Why don't you just do my pages and forget about all that other hey, Bob. stuff? Bob, 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 Bob. Gentlemen, good morning. Uh, for the benefit of our audience members who may not recognize you by sight, why don't you give us a quick intro of who each of you are and what you've been doing the last couple of years. Okay, well, how about we do it for each other? I didn't tell him this, but this is Bjarne mm -hmm. Strustrup. He is a professor at Texas A&M University, inventor of C++, AT&T Fellow, and National Academy of Engineering winner. Thank, congratulations okay. again from last year. Thanks, and this is Herb Sutter. Uh, he's worked for Microsoft for a few years. He's the uh, convener, that's sort of the chairman of the ISO C++ committee and a long-term um, C++ user and helping with the standard. Cool, excellent. Um, and I didn't tell you this, Mr. Struestrup, but uh, I've actually been a long-time fan of both of your books, having been you know, a C++ programmer prior to my you know, current engagements. And one of the books that I actually found particularly interesting uh, was, both in the, my C++ days as well as today, was the design and evolution of C++. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sort of curious, you know, there's been a lot of, of discussion around, you know, the design of programming languages, and now we start talking about domain-specific languages and so forth. I'm sort of curious, as one who's been through the trenches, so to speak, of programming language design, you know, what, what, what did you find in C++'s history that you think is, you know, broadly applicable to a lot of different languages? And, you know, obviously you've been involved with C++ for a while, too. What do you guys, what do you guys see as particularly relevant even today that, that, you know, the world can learn from your experience? Yeah. The first observation I'll make is it's interesting that we're here with an Edison Wesley crowd, and we both forgot to mention that uh, we, we, were, <laughs> we were authors, and... <laughs> and uh, the design evolution you refer to is, is the book that was the most fun for me to, to write. It looks it's like it. very rare mm -hmm. that you can find something where you can say thanks to your friends and explain where you put your foot in the mou your mouth and things like that. The right. academic and uh, book formats generally don't allow that. But anyway, I, I think that what's interesting about C++ and that you can take away from it is that there really is a, a place in the world for a language that can do close to the hardware work, mm -hmm. uh, can deal very effectively with resources, and yet uh, has the abstraction mechanisms that you can use for, for really demanding larger applications. And uh, that, that's the C++ model. People tend to forget it in, in either the hype or the duration, uh, that, that it actually there's, there's some that. hype surrounding these languages? You, Actually, you shock me. You surprise me. We don't, stun me. We don't have any hype machine. Never, <laughs> never had. Problem. Yeah, it's a real problem because you, you you hear everything good about other languages. They have people that are paid to uh, distribute the good news, even make the good news. Whereas if something good news happens in the C++ community, nobody hears about it because, well, we don't have any marketing budget. Right. Right. I will admit uh, that just recently I was you know, rummaging around, if you will, across the C++ parts of the web and discovered the Boost libraries mm -hmm. and was you know, quite pleasantly surprised. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I, I blogged at one point, what have they done to my language? This is, you know, where was this like years ago? I might never have you know, moved off of it. Well, we have an answer for you, by the way. Okay, what have you done? Not, not all, but many of the Boost libraries are in the next standard of C++, the one that we're about finishing. So when you, when you hear us talk about C++ OX, mm -hmm. that's just a, a placeholder for the next revision of C++, which we're working on. And currently the goal is that X is not hex, and that we're going to be done next year in 2008. <laughs> and so we'll fi fill that into C++ 08 or 09. But much of Boost, not a large part of it, much of it is already in there. Right. Hash-based containers and smart pointers and, and various other things that you would expect, right down to numerics work and uh, being able to, to take advantage of some of the libraries that normally people have had to go to vendors for now can be in the standard, things that everybody okay. can and should be able to use. Okay. 
See, I still remember the C++ in the days where everybody had to write their own string class. So, you know, well, I'm, that's I'm quite, quite glad well, to hear some of this. For a long that, time. That's yes. a long yeah. time ago. Um, the other thing you should probably mention in connection with C++ OX is uh, the threads library that mm -hmm. would be, be one of the major. So uh, we're getting concurrency there. support. In, oh, yes, uh, the next definitely. Okay. That, I mean, that, that's something that's just non-negotiable. Any language from this point forward that ignores concurrency is basically not relevant for many for mainstream right. applications. Right. Well, there That'll was this, there was this article by this guy not too long ago about something about there's no no more free lunch. Or oh, yeah, so I heard about would, that. Would article. you know? Would you I know anything about that? Dot or something? You, you want to speak to that for a second? Yeah, well, the, the Free Lunch is Over article that I wrote was actually a, an interesting article because I had an article deadline and had to write one, and I thought, well, this has been on my mind, so I wrote it, and it just took on a life of its own, <laughs> uh, touched a nerve, and it was something that really right. was relevant because we're standing at a crossroads. You know, right. for, the, for the first time in 50 years, in, which is the whole history of computing, mainstream hardware is no longer a von Neumann machine, mm -hmm. a single processor, you know, it's, which conceptually is just talking to memory or tape or something. Right. And that means that we have a whole new architecture. Everything is changing underneath us. And a lot of people, I think, are still ignoring the impact of that. They sort of know intellectually, oh yeah, we're getting more cores, but they don't really understand what it means. They may right. even understand I have to write my software differently with some vague notion of differently. And we're going to spend a number of years at conferences and in tooling, educating people and enabling them yeah. with tools how to do that. But the key thing to keep in mind is just because you've got lots of, say, for example, x86 cores, and the instruction set is the same. It ain't the same hardware. It is not the same architecture. And so people are fooled because they say, oh, it's still x86. Right. But it is very different. It is like a whole new kind of machine. And so on the one hand, that means that there's going to be a lot of new stuff to learn and a lot of techniques that we're going to change. But it's also a really great opportunity because for the first time in 50 years, it's greenfield. Everybody is uh, is looking forward to some exciting times of being able to do stuff we have never been able to do before because of lack of compute power. Well, and just think of all the new books we can write. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, is, is, that's something of interest to you, I think. <laughs> so, what kind of concurrency book can we look forward to? Well, that's oh, a different interview. for me? Oh no, 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 no. That, that, actually, you, me, actually, me. That's for you guys to, to work out. Actually, it, I, I find it scary. Uh, writing a decent book takes forever, um, and. So, so the burden of having to, to write those books is, is quite a lot. But it'll be nice to get back to concurrency work. That was where I started, uh, well, distributed uh, si systems and concurrency. But I think it's worth mentioning that there are lots of things in C++ that is not in the standards. Mm -hmm. One of the things the language is for is of building libraries. So much of the concurrency people get today in their systems is written in C++. Mm -hmm. It's just not standard. It is a library that people is using. So their threads library is probably a C++ library, whether it is on, um, on, on Microsoft or on Linux or something like that. So there's more to C++ than you can read in the standards document. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.